So this is a video on section, let me find my pen here, on section 2.3 uh, called the derivative as, as a function. Okay. So recall, so this is very closely related to section 2.2 where we talked about the derivative the derivative at a point. So let's take a look at what we did, just a quick recap of section 2.2, the derivative at a point. Remember what we had done, we had a function f of x, and a value, a particular value a was given, okay? And this is our x-axis and our y-axis. And we had then looked at the values a plus h, a plus h, we found the function evaluated at a and the function evaluated at a plus h and we had computed a secant line right here and the slope of that secant line the slope of the secant line was given by f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h and then we went on and we added in added in a limit as h goes to zero in front of this, a limit as h goes to zero of this average rate of change. Remember, this is our average rate of change. And we put in a limit uh, as h goes to zero in front of the average rate of change. And we called that quantity with the limit f prime of a. This was our derivative, this was the derivative of the function f of x at the point x is equal to a. And we had decided that what that was, f prime of a, was if this was your function, that value of a, f prime of a, right here, this is called the tangent line. And we had decided that f prime of a was the slope of that tangent line. So I want to do a little bit uh, more of examples, a little bit more of examples uh, related to, and so in this video, more examples on tangent lines, on tangent lines, for example, a little bit more on what they are and how you can recognize one, more on tangent lines. And we'd really like to move away from uh, we want to do the derivatives at any at any value of a at any value of x. Okay, so more. Let's so let's talk about the tangent lines, and then I will talk about this uh, being able to do the derivative for any value of x. And and what do I mean by that? That's kind of a weird statement. So we definitely want to talk about that more. So just here's a quick idea on tangent lines. Uh, the point A is the point that you were interested in. Notice the black dotted line, that is the function. And notice that I'm just moving this point around, the point where I'm drawing this red line. And in each case, how about right here, in each case, if you were to zoom in on where that line is attached to that function, you can see that the tangent line touches the function at this one point, at the point where it's tangent, it touches at least there. And this tangent line, if I zoom in really far, is the line that if you zoom in close enough, you can't tell the difference between the function and the tangent line. So you zoom out, there definitely is a difference between the line and the function. But if you zoom in on it, you can see that you can, it's hard to tell the difference between the line and the function. They become indistinguishable at a certain point. And this will be true for any place where you draw the tangent line. Let's move the tangent line uh, to here on the function. So here's your function cosine of x. Zoom in on this function. Let's zoom in. And again, you can see that it's hard to tell the difference between the function and the tangent line. Okay, so you move your point of tangency like way over here, for example. Zoom in again. 
notice that my x values are zooming in closer and closer to this uh, point 2.89 for example so if I keep zooming in zooming in see there's the 2.89 where our line is attached and you can't really tell the difference between the function and the line so that's the essence of the tangent line it is this line that at that point they kind of the function and the line kind of have the same slope okay so what we want to do here is we want to be able to do the derivative for any value of x. What that's called is f prime of x. This should be compared to f prime of a, where a was a specific, a specific value of x, a specific value of x called x is equal to a. This was only a single number. F prime of A, that came out to be a number. Okay, and we'll do an example of that to remind you. F prime of X, what we mean by this, the answer here, this will be a function of the variable X. Okay, so let's take a look here, and then we'll come back to the plot in just a second to, to see what the, to see what, to compare our answers to the plot at hand. But let's take a look here. If I gave you the function f of x is equal to x squared, this is an example we did from section 2.1. Oh, I'm sorry, from 2.2. And you pick the specific a value, and I ask you to find f prime of a, where a is equal to 1 in this case. What did you have to do? You had to compute the limit as h goes to 0 of f of 1 plus h minus the function evaluated at 1 divided by h. Okay. And you work this out and you got the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 plus h squared. That turned out to be 1 plus 2h plus h squared minus the function evaluated at 1 was 1, that was 1 squared. And then you got h, and then this simplified to the limit as h goes to 0. It simplified to um, 2 plus h. Okay, and then when you did the limit, you got 2. Notice that that f prime of 1 is a number. The derivative at a point will come out to be a number. In this case, that number is 2. If I ask you to do the same thing, and I said for the same function, change the point a to be 2, you would have to find f prime of 2. Right? You would then just have to go through the same process. The limit as h goes to 0, you would do 2 plus h minus f of 2 divided by h, and you would repeat all the steps, and you would find that your number comes out to be 4. So f prime of 2 comes out to be a number that's 4. You should try that. Okay. If I then did the same function, this gets kind of old after a while, but if you change a to be, say, equal to 4, you would then have to find f prime of 4 is the limit as h goes to 0. f of 4 plus h minus f of 4 divided by h. And you would repeat the steps, repeat the steps from over here, and you will get that your answer will be 8, which is a number, and you should check that. But notice that in each case, by changing the value a and keeping the function the same, we're keeping the function the same in each case, all we're doing is just changing the a value. All it's changing is the 2, the number a here. We haven't really um, done anything new. It's just the same process. So rather than compute f prime of a for a value of a at a time, meaning that don't, for every time you change the a, don't redo the limit problem, right? What we want to do 
is we want to, new to section 2.3, we want to find f prime of x equal to the limit as h goes to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h, where the value of x that you're choosing is any value. Don't choose the particular value of a and put that in. Just leave the variable x, uh, leave the value of a unspecified, and leave it a variable x. Okay, so for example, let's take a look here, f of x, if f of x is equal to x squared. And I want you to find f prime of x. Well, we're going to compute the limit as h goes to 0. f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And let's just follow our nose for a little bit and just try this problem and see what we get. Limit as h goes to 0, you'll get x plus h squared because our function is x squared. So when you put in x plus h into this function, you get x plus h squared minus the function evaluated at x is x squared divided by h. Repeat the process to just like you did before, limit as h goes to 0, but we're repeating the process for any value of x. So this will be x squared plus 2xh minus h squared minus x squared divided by h. And this will simplify to limit as h goes to 0. The x squareds cancel. Both of these terms have an h in it, so we'll factor the h out, 2x minus h divided by h. The h's cancel. And we now have the world's easiest limit. Limit as h goes to 0 of 2x minus h. Um, as h goes to 0, this term goes to 0. 2x doesn't have any h's in it, so your answer will just be 2x. Okay. So what we have shown here is that f prime of x is equal to 2x. Okay. This is your derivative of the function f of x, where your derivative is given as a function. Okay? So we have now two functions running around. If you have the function f of x is equal to x squared, you also have the function f prime of x. In this case, f prime of x is equal to 2x. Okay? Now let's put in some values here. If you put in, say, x is equal to, let's put in x is equal to 1, then the function evaluated at 1 will be 1 squared. The derivative evaluated at 1 will be equal to 2. This was our answer. And that was your answer from before. Okay. If you put in 2 into this function, you'll get f of 2 is equal to 4. You'll get f prime of 2 is equal to 4. Okay. And I think this was our answer. Did we do that one from before? Yes. Our derivative was 2 when we did the limit out the full way. So, And when you put in 4, you'll get the function evaluated at 4. That would be 16 but your derivative evaluated at 4 will be equal to 8. And all these are the answers from before. Okay, so what have we just done here? We have found, okay, if I give you any function f of x, and then you find f prime of x via the limit as h goes to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. What we have just found by that is we have found the slope of the tangent line to the function f of x at any value of x that you want that is in the domain of f prime. So let's take a look at an example over here. Okay. 
take a look at an example over here. Let's make up a function f of x. Let's say that it's 4x cubed minus 6x. Okay. I will leave it to you to find f prime of x by computing the limit as h goes to 0 of the average rate of change. So basically, follow through this process. Okay. What you will find, what you should find, let's take a look at what these answers are going to be. 4 times x cubed minus 6 times x. Let me run this program. Okay. Well, you should find for your derivative, according to what I've got here, you should get 12x squared minus 6 as your answer. Okay, so let's take a look here. Um, therefore, here is our function in black. That is the function 4x cubed minus 6x. When you pick the value x is equal to 1, plug that into f prime of x you should get 6. You'll get 12 times 1 squared minus 6, which is equal to 6. The slope of that tangent line, if you do the rise over the run, the slope of that red line over here, the slope of the red line is equal to 6. Okay? But every time you change your x value, you get a new tangent line. So let's move it over here. Let's move the tangent line to 2. So here's our line has moved to 2. When you find f prime of 2, you should get 42. You get 12 times 2 squared minus 6. Uh, you should get 42 there. The slope of this let that red line, it's a new line because it's at a new point. That line is more steeply sloped. It has a larger rise over run. The slope of that will be 42 over here. So every time you change the value, you can even put, say, negative 3. Over here is the function. 4x cubed minus 6x is the black dotted line. We've moved the point to negative 3. There's our tangent line. The slope of that tangent line comes out to be 102. That will be f prime of 3. It would be 12 times 3 squared. I'm sorry, negative 3. 12 times negative 3 squared minus 6. If you do that quantity, you should get 102. So let's take a look here, if I zoom out on this function. Okay. Notice that every point along this function, the tangent line is always sloping upward. It's always a positive slope. Okay. So, uh, well, We'll look into we'll look into those issues later. But this this is how you can use your f prime of x function, your f prime of x function to tell you what the tangent line slope is at any point without having to do a limit problem, one limit problem for every value of x that you want to pick. And I'll have a lot more to say on this uh, tangent line problem in the near future.